Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Speedy 44 coming into another video. So, uh, I want to talk about uh, Anthony Davis. That's exactly who I want to talk about. Um, just kind of, just, just kind of weigh in on what I thought, think of him two years into the Laker tenure. Um, he's amazing, <laughs> obviously. First of all, that that set that aside. He's a fantastic all-world athlete all-world basketball player, skilled basketball player, uh, someone who has uh, a, a body type that allows him to affect the game, probably more so than 95% of the basketball talents who's ever cross, crossed uh, into, into, into the NBA. Uh, we're talking about somebody who can turn your defense into a bottom defense to a top defense just by coming to your squad. Um, and his length... Uh, not only allows him uh, the ability to, to to cover a lot of space, um, but he also has an athleticism and ability to run the floor that allows him to play uh, fast pace. Uh, he has po post moves that he could go to here and there, uh, different skills uh, moves that he can go to in terms of mid-range combinations, different packages of uh, post moves, uh, layup packages, uh, Ball handling is above average uh, for his size. He used to be a point guard, if I'm not mistaken, or a guard of some sort before he went on his growth spurt as a young man. And uh, so that has allowed him an opportunity to develop his uh, mid-range game, his, his three-point game, all of that. His free throw uh, game is phenomenal. He's one of the best free throw shooters, big men in the game. So you're talking about a guy who can do just about anything. Um I think the, the the only issue, honestly, that I see with him is health. Health. That's it. Um, you know, he, he's, he's been fortunate enough to not be asked to do things that he doesn't do well. At, so it's not like you're asking, you're putting a ball in his hand saying, okay, set other guys up, be a point guard and stuff like that. Or, you know, just, just weird stuff that sometimes coaches ask players to do. He, 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 he plays to his strengths. Um, if there's a knock on him, another knock besides his health, I would say uh, he it would be great to see him play in the paint uh, a bit more, be a bit more tough on his lower body so that he can body up against certain guys. He tends to get pushed a bit, um, depending on who he's going up against. But other than that, I mean, even when he's being pushed to a degree, he still ends up getting the stop because his length and his, his quickness and his, his IQ allows him uh, to time things. At a, at a phenomenal rate and and just overall make good decisions in terms of not jumping when he shouldn't jump and uh, not going for head fakes, stuff like that. He's just a very intelligent basketball player and skilled basketball player. Um, and so he, he's, he's almost a flawless player. You know, if, if, he could, if he could play 82 games a year, he'd be the MVP every year, in my opinion. I mean, he's one of those guys. He just, just can't stay healthy. And I think that's why there are so many people out here who are actually – wondering if it's a legitimate thing to do in trading him and my thing is of course not of course not now if i'm to believe that his injury issues are as bad as others do then there is no uh salvaging the player you know and i'm not limiting that to him that's anybody i don't care how talented you are if your injuries start to pile up to a point where you you can't produce at all then obviously you hold no value and that, so that's that's just what it is. But I don't see his injury issues as that bad. What I see is people pre, um, rating him as more injury prone than he actually is. Um, when I think about players being injury prone, I think about players that have injuries that keep them out for long periods of time, but they have to go under the knife and um, or or something of the nature where if they're out, they're going to stay out for long periods of time. Uh, take a little longer to come back than you necessarily want them to. Uh, maybe won't come back in shape when they do come back. That's that's the type of player. It's like that's who I would be more so concerned about in regards to injury being injury prone. If a guy's had lower extremity uh, surgeries, many of them, that's when I start being concerned. AD ain't had no stuff like that. He never had no stuff like that. What AD usually has, and the reason why people don't like ad in this regard is because in games live in game situations 
when he goes down with something that looks like an injury, it usually removes him from that game. So we have so many clips of him going down in a heap and not, you know, not continuing or having those injuries linger to where it affects his play or keeps him out of games. But you don't hear about Anthony Davis going out for another knee surgery or another uh, Achilles surgery or anything like that. The injuries that he's had, he's usually been able to heal without any disruption of his body whatsoever. It's usually stuff that just keeps him out. Tissue stuff. Stuff that has to do with his pain threshold. That's what I've noticed. So while we can say he's injury prone, when was the last time he broke a bone? He had the Achilles injury and the hamstring injury, but did it snap? No. You, some of the players that y'all love to champion have had more extensive injury history than Anthony. Injuries that have kept them out longer than Anthony. The truth of the matter is, you pay more attention to Anthony because the teams that he's removed from don't function well without him. You miss Anthony more than you miss those guys. You may champion those guys more, but usually their teams may be able to weather the storm without them. As to where Anthony Davis makes up, as I said, literally your entire defense if he's on your squad. So you need him more. You rely on him more. And when he's out with stuff that doesn't have you going under the knife, but does keep him out for like four and five games at a time, yes, it's going to be frustrating for you. You're going to look at him as an injury-prone player, but but consider it and weigh it against the guys who've had the surgeries. Consider it against and weigh it against guys you haven't seen in over a year and a half. Because you have guys like that out there. Do you look at them and say, we must trade them? Because of their injury issues? Some of them you ain't even considering trading. And these guys have been hurt for years. Think about it. Anthony ain't missed the full season at all. He's played in every season. He may miss some games here and there with these injuries. No surgeries that I'm aware of. None of his lower extremities. No knees. No ankles. None of that. So let's, let's put this in its proper perspective. Does Anthony Davis has du have durability issues? Yes. Do we, are we concerned about those? Yes. If he would have been healthy to end these playoffs, we think we would have been in this championship situation now. We would be winning the championship. We wouldn't lose to no damn Milwaukee. I'm just going to be real. We wouldn't lose to Milwaukee. So yes, did, did, did his durability cost us this championship? I can argue it, it, it cost us the championship. Yes, I, I believe it did. But I'm not going to put more sauce on him being injury prone than necessary. That's all I'm saying. Let's kind of put it in its perspective here. What type of injuries has he had? How long do those injuries keep him out? How important is he to what it is that any team that he's on does? And then we understand why so much emphasis is placed on him when he's not there. It's simple as that, y'all. My name is BDF44. Thank you all for watching. We are not trading AD for nobody. Not, we shouldn't. Obviously, I have no control over it, but we shouldn't. It would be a very horrible mistake. I'm out.